Thanks, everybody, for joining the second uh, club meeting of the Library Marketing Book Club. I really appreciate everybody joining, really appreciate everybody um, participating, and uh, it's great to see. And I think the group is up over 200 members now, which is really exciting. And um, we, um, you know, we, we'll just keep on doing this as long as you guys want to. Uh, we'll keep reading books and uh, marketing and marketing adjacent books. Um, we'll go through right now, we'll, we'll do a couple things to start. So first, let's take a look at our, um, here's our group rules. So group rules for the group on Facebook, same as here. Be kind and courteous, no hate speech or bullying, no politics, which I know is very tough right now with a lot of political things going on, but let's leave that at the door. Um, keep it to marketing and library, unless we read a political book or something, but um, and no promotions or spam um, and respect everybody's privacy. So those are our group rules. Hopefully y'all are good with them. Uh, as far as participating in the meeting, if you have any questions, um, we're a pretty small group, so you can, uh, you can, you can use, feel free to use the uh, raise hand feature. If you go into the participants, you should see down at the bottom a little button that says raise hand. Um, if you want to speak, that's great. If, uh, if the spirit moves you and you would like to speak and just get attention, that's cool too. Um, like I said, we're a pretty small group, so I don't expect it to be too outrageous. Um, and uh, anytime anybody has any suggestions, uh, to make this better, go ahead and shoot them on the Facebook group. I'm trying to see about getting a little website together that may uh, be a little bit easier to organize some of the content, like um, what are we going to read next and some other things. But for right now, we're still going all through the Facebook group, and it seems to be working pretty well. I hope it's working well for you all. Um, and uh, somebody just suggested, and I guess, again, we do have a pretty small group that uh, we go through and do maybe a quick set of introductions. So don't want to take up too much time, but, uh, but I think that is a good idea so we can start to get all familiar with everybody. So um, I'll just, uh, I'll call you, uh, call on you, because I don't know another way to do that, as I'm sure all of our faces are arranged differently on each of our screens. Uh, and just uh, name, um, library organization, your position there, that would be great. Uh, so I'll start. I'm Chris Boven. I work at Jacksonville Public Library in Jacksonville, Florida, and I am the um, marketing director here at the library. So um, Angela Christie. That's me. I'm Angela Rhymes is my last oh, name. Okay, Angela. Um, no. I use my middle name because I don't ah. want people to track me. <laughs> um, and I am the marketing and PR manager at the Easton Area Public Library in Easton, Pennsylvania. Okay, great. Thanks. Angela Hirsch. Hi, I'm the other Angela, <laughs> and I'm Angela Hirsch, <laughs> and I am uh, currently the senior engagement consultant at Novelist, which is the company that a lot of libraries have with databases for readers advisory, and we also have Library Aware for marketing, and I also run superlibrarymarketing.com, the blog about library marketing. Thanks, Angela. Brianna McDonald? Hey, um, I am the marketing communications manager for the Anderson County Library System in Anderson, South Carolina. Okay. Um, a little bit small. Um, and small confession, I did not read the book. My, ah. it's on the way. <laughs> um, so I am, I am here to politely eavesdrop. Thank you, Brianna. And yes, we are. Um, it's great to have anybody come in and you do not have to have read the book in this book club. Um, they're, you know, they're always great things. Sometimes people might be planning to read the book and I think that'll be all good. So great. Uh, Donna Forbes, if I said that right. Oh, I think you're muted, Donna. 
Oh no, you're not muted, but oh, you're. But my my headset was muted. <laughs> Here we go. Too many buttons. Um, yes, I am Donna Forbes. I am the uh, marketing and events coordinator for Illinois Prairie District Public Library in Woodford County, Illinois. We are about halfway between Chicago and St. Louis, just outside of Peoria. And I intended to read the book and I got about a third of the way through the book. And then we had a remote learning issue at home. Oh, no. <laughs> oh, so no. my, my, uh, my time got devoted elsewhere, but I'm, I'm enjoying the book. That's great. That's fantastic. Uh, Christy L. Hi, Christy Lassen. Sorry, I should change. Hey, my Christy. Here. That's all right. Oh, then my phone rings right as you call me. <laughs> um, I'm sorry, I came in late. Oh, sorry. Uh, just name a uh, library you work at your position there. Oh, okay. So uh, Christy Lassen, Howard County Library System in Maryland. We're between Baltimore and D.C. And uh, I'm the Director of Communications and Partnerships. Okay, great. Thanks. Uh, Hannah Kiger. Hey everybody, <laughs> um, my name's Hannah and I'm the marketing coordinator at Johnson City Public Library in Johnson City, Tennessee. Okay, so, awesome, thank you. And I finished the book about an hour ago. <laughs> Yay, <laughs> good so. timing, <laughs> well planned. <laughs> All right, uh, uh, Jody Lazar. Somebody might be walking in, so I might have to mask up here. Hi, okay. I'm Jody Lazar, Winter Park Public Library. Uh, we're just outside of Orlando. Okay. Uh, 501c3 library. I'm the community librarian, and uh, but I do get involved in marketing. Okay, great. Hello. Yeah, I see somebody peeking in the door. <laughs> uh, <Okay>. Kelly Rembert <laughs> or Rembert. Yep, I'm here. Hi, I'm Kelly Rambert. I'm uh, from the Southfield Public Library, which is just outside of Detroit. And then I'm also the founder of the Michigan PR Group, which is a group of uh, marketing librarians in Michigan. And Hi. my co-worker, Henry. <laughs> Hi, Henry. <laughs> Thanks, Kelly. Uh, and Rachel Terrace. Hello, I'm Rachel Karras. I work as the Library Events and External Relations Assistant at the Leatherby Libraries at Chapman University, which is a small school in Orange, California. Okay, awesome. Thank you. And right, last but not least on the list that I have is Rachel Walters. Hello, everyone. Um, I am the online librarian with um, we all know, we all wear many hats, so that's just the basic job description, but online librarian for Indiana Wesleyan University. So the um, university is actually located in Marion, Indiana, um, but I am a remote employee, so I'm in the Indy metro area, so. Okay, nice. Thanks, Rachel. Great. Well, very cool. It's nice to meet everybody. Hope everybody enjoyed uh, meeting everyone else. It's really cool. Look forward to keeping up with y'all going forward. Um, so, so yeah, so let's start off with just, uh, what were your opinions of the book? What did you think of the book? Anybody who'd like to jump in, feel free. If you want, I'll start since okay, it was my Angela. book suggestion. <laughs> it was Angela's suggestion. Yes. Angela's suggestion said it changed her life. So now we're going to find <laughs> out how. <laughs> so I love this book. <laughs> um, and if you haven't read it yet and you're worried about reading it, one lovely thing that I like about it is the chapters are insanely short. They're like three pages. And I think and I think that's a hallmark of Anne's writing. Um, I thought I would put later on the link to sign up for her bi-weekly newsletter that she sends out. I think she does a really good, it's a really great example of a newsletter. Yeah. We do a lot of newsletters in libraries and um, 
all of her writing, all of her sentences are very short, her paragraphs are very short. So um, if you're worried about reading it and it taking a lot of time, you can split it up and it's really easy to do. As you can see, I have lots of many little marks of things that I love about this book. But one of the, the two things I wanted to talk about was the first time I read this book was in, I think it was 2015, maybe the end of 2015. And so that was the first time I'd ever heard the phrase ugly first draft. Yeah. And I was a journalist. So we wrote all the time, but I never wrote an ugly first draft. And this is the um, way that I write literally everything that from that moment on speeches that I had to write when I worked, I worked at the public library of Cincinnati and Hamilton County before this. So speeches, blog posts, like annual reports, newsletters, everything. I did what Anne does, which is to sit down and basically just write everything that is in your brain and spill it all out into one document without stopping if you can until you are exhausted and or out of thoughts. I do that with all of my blog posts as well, and it works really well. There's a whole chapter in here before the ugly first draft, draft chapter six, which is following a writing GPS. And this is the exact formula that I started following for all of my blog posts. So I think if you read the book, that will be um, something that you can put into practice. One of the hardest things for me, having worked in a library is chapter 23, which is one page. I think it should be longer. It's avoid writing by committee. I think this is a thing that happens in every single library. We all have to write by committee. And I don't, I never found the way around this, to be honest with you. So I'm curious if anybody has ever figured out a way to stop writing by committee or to reduce the amount of cooks in the kitchen, so to speak, in your writing in your library. That's my question. Well First, I'll just say the true is uh, same is true for design. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Have you found any ways around it, Christy? Have you uh, got any uh, any well, success? I mean, I guess I guess we're pretty lucky in that we don't write by committee too much. Um, okay. That you know we pretty ha we have pretty well defined like who's going to write what. Um, which is mostly within my department, but um, yeah, I, I, we have had a situation where we brought in a new person to our team um, who's just fantastic in, in almost every way, um, but I've noticed that she's more of a do everything by committee kind of person. I'm like, no, 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 wait. <laughs> <laughs> that just takes three times as long as it needs to, so um, so I don't really have anything to add to, to that. And I'll be upfront and say, I haven't read the book yet. I bought it right away. <laughs> it's sitting on my desk. I just haven't gotten through it yet. But I wanted to hear what everyone else had to say about it. It's a, it's a great one for, um, thanks, Christy. It's a great one, uh, even if you haven't read the book. Um, What's really good about it, as Angela said, chapters are really short. It's also, I'm looking forward to having it as a reference book because it's, it's not one that it reads well from cover to cover. Um, though I do have one thing. If anybody listened to the book, did anybody listen to the book? I don't know if I can't see any faces now. Um, I, I did the first time. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, uh, yeah, we, um, so what's funny with the, with, when you listen to the book is the reader actually reads out all of the hyperlinks <laughs> so, with all of the uh, uh, gobbledygook and everything. So it's funny, they go through with the forward slash, forward slash hyphen. Um, but it, it is a really, it does seem like it's a really good reference book. So I got it on, uh, I also got it on Kindle so I could have it electronically, but um, I think it's, it, it is something that not only will, you know, will I read cover to cover, but also something that I'm going to keep around. So I think that's pretty good. And yeah, Angela, um, I agree with the writing uh, by committee. I've been in other industries before the library and, and it does seem to be um, possibly because of the uh, nature of the library. We like working together. We like, um, we like kind of, uh, coming up with things where you like being community and uh, that can be good, but yeah, that can also be slow. Donna, you have your hand up. 
Yeah, I um, I came into this position. I, I was actually hired for for my position at the time that the position was created. Oh wow! So I I was able to kind of kind of make it what I want it to be, and I come to this as an English major. <laughs> <laughs> so, so much of what I have seen so far is all don't do all of the things that you learned in grade school, high school, college. <laughs> all right. Yeah. yeah. So, you know, but I, I'm lucky because if there's anything that needs to be written, I write it and then I send it to my boss and he either says, this is beautiful and send it on or you know, he'll give me a few notes and then, so, so it's not necessarily really writing by committee, but it is, he, he wants to see everything before it goes out the door so that if there's typos, et cetera, et cetera, it's on him and not on me, which I, I really appreciate. <laughs> That's very nice. Yes. <laughs> That's excellent. Um, Rachel Walters. Um, I will give an example of the writing by committee because um, I am also, I also do graphic design. And so I know that everyone likes to, you know, do stuff. And I come from my first library I worked at. Um, the director was a micromanager. Um, one of those ones where you feel like you are in fifth grade and you have to ask to go to the bathroom. Um, and so, yeah, everybody laughs, but it's really true. Um, but this, um, at this one, um, when I first came in, the director was really good. And then um, she retired and one of our current librarians stepped into the Dean role. And what I will do is recently I was asked by the main university blog to write some like one piece for the library, which ended up turning into four. Um, but it's a really good exposure for the library because, you know, their Facebook page and stuff gets more exposure than ours does. And so what I did is I came up with some, you know, outlines and stuff. And then I asked our team of five, hey, does anyone have anything else that maybe we should add in here? Um, and then that was the last time that I asked the whole group. Um, I wrote the first blog post and then I always um, send it to the dean. Um, and then I have one other librarian that I explicitly trust and I will get their feedback and then I'll make corrections and then, um, you know, post it, forward it, whatever I got to do. Um, but, and that's one thing my boss says, he said, I love the fact that you are comfortable enough to take the initiative and do things on your own, but also weigh in when you need to. Um, and then also ask for feedback because, you know, my eyes, if I've been looking at something for a couple hours, I'm probably going to overlook stupid typos. Um, <laughs> but that's how I get past it is, you know, at, you know, I will get ID, I'll collect everyone's ideas about maybe what we should add. And then um, there's, you know, two people that I will run stuff by before I call it quits. Um, but I will have to say this book, I've already started referencing it since I finished it. And I have to say that um, I think as people who have, you know, several degrees behind our belts, that we are very good with academic writing. Um, but I think that we, like, this is a good reminder that we need to simplify it. We need to, you know, keep it simple, stupid. We really do. Um, you know, just to make it easier to read and everyone's on information overload, especially with COVID. Um, even more so now uh, over the last couple months. So being able to narrow that stuff down um, and make it easy and why it's good for them and um, keeping, you know, the readers in mind. Um, I have to say, I think that this book came in at just the right time. Thank you, Angela, for the suggestion, <laughs> because um, with the first blog post having went live last Friday, um, I think that it was, um, it was a lifesaver. Um, as far as writing that, like I was, took a lot of material and having to compress it all down into clip, um, quick bullet points was a challenge, but I think that this book definitely helped me get there. That's great, Rachel. That's fantastic. Yeah, I, um, I feel the same way about uh, having already referenced it, and I'd love to hear from anybody else who, um, you know, who's, who's read the book and started using it, because I definitely, uh, 
have uh, shortened a lot of my writing, made it, you know, looked at uh, how it, how, um, how I can economize on words and get rid of some of the junk. She's got a whole, that whole section on getting rid of kind of all the intros and, and excuse me and, and all those things that we put, and we often put at the beginning of a lot of articles and all the work that we do. And also the headlines too. I mean, I, I've, um, I've taken a look at headlines. I just did a news release for something. Uh, it was a big, you know, big event and news release, but, um, you know, using that, I changed some words. I had historical and changed to centennial because I thought that was, you know, that, uh, gave it a little more, uh, detail and specificity. And I, I felt really good about, about how I was writing. So, um, yeah. Anybody else? What, what are some other people's thoughts about, about that or anything about the book? Hi, I'm Lori. And, hey, Lori. <laughs> and I'm, I'm pleased that you guys have this group because marketing is relatively new to me, although I've been doing it for just over a year. And Lori, Lori, where are you? Just which, uh, what, what system or company are you? I am with the Allegheny County Law Library in Pittsburgh. Okay. okay great. And, Thanks. And yeah. So it's kind of cool because it just, it doesn't, it, it's, the focus, the scope is for anybody, no matter where you are, what you do in any part of your life that you're writing. This, this absolutely helps. Um, I have to say though, I got it, I borrowed it from our local library, Carnegie Library Pittsburgh on Kindle. And I found it frustrating that I couldn't page back. Oh. <laughs> and most of the time, I like Kindle, I like both. I really do like both. But it was it was frustrating, even though you can hit those highlights and copy and paste and all that stuff. I'm still new to that. I mean, I'm, so um, that was a little frustrating for me, but that was that format. But anyway, sure. um, the writing buddy, I'm so glad that that was mentioned because I luckily am blessed with having a writing buddy here at work. She actually has a JD and of course, as librarians at a law, public law library, we can't interpret, we can't, um, you know, we can only give you information, what you do with it is up to you. But we are very much on the same level. Um, I have a master's in library science, I've been doing library stuff for 40 years, oh my God. And, uh, <laughs> and she, we are on the same level. It's been great because She'll send me, we have a problem patron, we send this person an email saying, this isn't appropriate uh, behavior at the library, especially during COVID. She wants to hoard books, okay? <laughs> so then they're all in quarantine, nobody else can use them. But she and I share emails, um, my newsletter I send to her before I send it even to my boss to have her look at it and say, make sure this is right. My, um, so I love, the buddy, the writing buddy is awesome. And it's great when you have somebody that's on the same page as you, so to speak, but yet can give you decent, you know, uh, feedback that isn't, it's constructive feedback. It's not, you know, not, if, if there's only four of us that work here, although we're in the process of hiring one. But anyway, the other thing is I had to laugh. Part of me, as you can probably tell, I like to have fun what I do. I love what I do. So, and it comes across that way, I think. But one of the things that I did recently in the newsletter, um, I talked about a book. Um, George Beisel is a publisher that does a nice comprehensive book on law for different areas of the law in Pennsylvania. And they were being overlooked. And it was on the chopping block and I'm like, no, don't do that. I mean, just because the lawyers don't know about it doesn't mean, and it's not available online. Okay. So you need to have the book them, itself. So one of the things that I, it has all different types of the law, Pennsylvania law, and it follows right nicely, you know, mm -hmm. together. But anyway, I, my title in my newsletter was Purdens, which is the Pennsylvania statutes is Purdens. I put Purdens on steroids. And he <laughs> nice. loved it. And it was like, it was just nice having that feedback. And guess what? 
people are starting to use the, the Visal books. So obviously it's made great. an impact. Yes. And it's great because it's not, law isn't always cut and dry and dry. Right. It's nice to have a little bit of fun with it too. Yeah. 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 That's great, Lori. No, great example. Yeah. It is nice to have somebody to write with for sure. <laughs> yes. Uh, yeah. Rachel Karras. Hi. I, you asked what advice people are already starting to take to heart. And I think yeah. the, the piece that I've been thinking about the most as I've been reading this over the past week is about being pathologically empathetic or empathic towards your readers, towards your users, potential customers. And of course, the customer language in libraries is so fraught, but obviously we have users, we have, and you know, I just find that so often we find ourselves, or at least I do, and our team writing about, well, the library has this service and this service and this service, and we can do this and this and this. And thinking about reframing it as, here's what you can do at the library. Here's how the library can help you with this paper. Here's how the library can help you with this research question. Here's how the library can help you, well, once the printers are available again, make copies and print things. Um, I, I think reframing that has been something that really was almost sort of earth shattering for me reading this book of reframing our language that way. It's been really helpful. Uh, yeah, oh, that's excellent, Rachel. Great, great observation. And to me, it was a nice tie in with our previous book, which talked about focusing on uh, the customer. So yeah, it's great. Jody. Well, I just wanted to echo Rachel a bit. I have, I've almost completed the book and actually this, I, I can't wait to race to the finish because there's so much good at the end here. Uh, but um, I haven't really put it into practice yet. I'm a very, um, tentative writer. I don't feel like I'm very skilled at that. So I, I have not done the ugly first draft, but I can't wait to try that. But she's also uh, proposed something that really appeals to me, which is make a list. I'm a list maker. And this idea of just writing things down as a list, I think I can work with that as a first as a first go. And the other piece, which I think Rachel may have, you know, may have appreciated too, was that you can write at, uh, starting with like, dear mom, right as you know kind of a personal approach to it so i really I, I can't wait to start putting some of this into practice yeah yeah the dear mom was really cool that was a great way to kind of get you off the off the starting block and and uh and start that that's one i haven't tried but i'm very curious about trying that too definitely though about uh that you know that like we've heard so much so far that ugly first draft and just um you know, I'd always been more of a, oh, I can compose it at the typewriter and it's fine. Um, but this, you know, kind of re looking through the draft and doing that, I think's really helped. So Donna, you had, uh, you had something to share. Well, just to Jody's point, um, you know, I, I never considered it to be an ugly first draft. I mean, I didn't use that, that language. Um, but I will often do just like a brain dump on paper and and sometimes it does take the form of a list sometimes it's just you know random thoughts but then i i will go back and i'll cut and paste <laughs> and it's like oh wait no that goes here and that goes you know and 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 sort it out that way um mostly because i went to school in the era of your senior year in high school you spent your entire english class from September to May, walking around with a box full of three by five cards for your <laughs> for your senior paper, where you put all your things in order and then you put them in the order that they're gonna be in the paper and then you write them. <laughs> yeah, that's a very effective way though to do that. I, I've, uh, I've done some three by five carding myself. <laughs> so yeah, it's definitely a great way to do that. Yeah, it's awesome. Um, yeah, I think I think that's great to uh, to work on doing the drafts and and doing the revisions, and uh, it's been it's been very helpful. So, what else? We have a couple other folks who have joined us. Uh, I see uh, Nicole, Shauna, um, or anybody else that that wants to jump in and and uh, share. 
Well, I just came on to uh, just creep on, um, but I did get my book, but I just got it like yesterday. So okay. <laughs> I haven't gotten a chance to dig into it all, but I like, I can like take what everybody said and I can add those topics and I can skim to those, those pieces. I like that. <laughs> yeah. Thanks, Nicole. Yeah. It's a, it's a, uh, Nicole, what, what system are you in? You're up in. Yeah. You're, I'm part of Delaware like County District Library. I'm just in uh, central Ohio. Okay. Very nice. Um, uh, so yeah, it's, you know, it is like we were talking about uh, earlier. It's a great book to kind of skim and skip and, um, you know, find a lot of good resources, find a lot of good advice. Um, it's, you know, it's definitely one that, uh, you can even read through a couple times, pick up again. Um, and, uh, yeah, I mean, it's, it's, I think it was, it was really great. And, um, Rachel, you were talking about empathy and what's, uh, interesting is if you, look at Anne's, uh, bio, um, Anne's bio and kind of what um, motivates her, the two things that she mentions are uh, marketing writing and empathy. Empathy is a, is a big part of what she does and um, it's huge. I mean, it, it, is, it is such a big part of, you know, like I said, the last book, um, the story brand book definitely had to do with empathizing with your audience and, and they're the heroes. And now we have a little bit um, uh, here talking about empathizing very much the same with speaking with the language of you. And if you have a chance, look at, um, go to the marketing props website, look at their about us uh, statement and you'll see exactly what she says as far as that, um, uh, as far as that goes, as far as empathizing and speaking in a language of you. And I think that is a great model for us to look at for our About Us pages. Jody. One part that intrigued me that I was wondering if anybody else has used either because of the book or just because they're great writers uh, is, is using an analogy, using analogies. Does anybody have any good examples or have you, do you practice that on a regular basis? Yeah, anybody who's good with analogies, with metaphors, with, uh, with uh, trying to um, explain. Donna, you have, some, you have some ideas? Well, not, not an analogy per se, but we've got an event going on right now. We're basically doing a, a vote for your favorite Halloween candy. But we structured it as an NCAA March Madness kind of bracket with, you know, starting with 64 and working our way down. And, you know, when at the beginning of end of September, beginning of October, when we published these brackets and we said, fill out your bracket, you know, here's the 64 candies we're starting with, fill out your bracket and you can win $25 worth of Halloween candy. <laughs> you know, That's a good every, Everybody, even on our you know small rural farming communities, knew how to fill out a bracket and what, you know, what what doing that and you know and so it's it's kind of meeting people where they're at and knowing that you you might have to approach them in a way that they can understand. You know, you have to to make the framework be something that they can wrap their heads around and understand so that you're not trying to a explain this concept and b explain why you're trying to explain the concept and and, and then it just gets lost in translation yeah yeah was that what you're talking about jody that kind of thing where yeah we're kind of using something else like the brackets yeah i think that was uh, a great example that's a perfect example too yeah. so it's not you're not really you're just pre presenting something in the style which which people would be familiar with so yeah. that's that's a good example yeah, Angela, you had some. You had something. Yeah, I I use analogies a lot. Thanks to Anne. <laughs> no, I was I use them so often. I was like, oh, what example can I give? Um, but I wrote a piece recently for something in my day job about uh, we were trying to help our customer libraries understand why they need a marketing plan because so many of us like just are reactive, and so. I uh, use the example of when we used to travel before the era of COVID, you would likely plan out your trip and, you know, you would book your airline tickets and then maybe look for a good hotel and look for what restaurants are around the hotel and what 
uh, what attractions do you want to go visit? And some of us, maybe we show up and we just do whatever in the city in which we are visiting, but most of us have a plan. So that was kind of a use of an analogy for me. Um, <laughs> I also like, you know, one of the things I started doing after I read this book was to include personal stories in some of my writing. So again, I wrote another piece about marketing, go figure. And <laughs> I was talking about my time in news um, and how I thought, like, I'm a great journalist. The work I'm doing is so impactful. It's meaningful to people. And then our boss would bring in a consultant group to tell us how to do a better job of putting our shows together. And the focus groups, all they wanted, really, the, like the main reason they were watching the local news was for the weather. So I use that example often, like, Sometimes you think you're doing something that's really impactful and then you go and you ask people who are consuming that thing, is this the, what you, are we on the same page? And they're like, no, we're here for something completely different. So working personal stories in too, sometimes I know people feel uncomfortable doing that, but I think it makes it more engaging for the reader. Yeah, yeah I think so. Yeah, I think there definitely is a place for personal uh, anecdotes and things that can uh, can humanize your blog stories can can make it really connect and that was something else too that I liked I don't know anybody else has any thoughts on um, some things you mentioned about email um, as far as um, you know uh, writing in that uh, that conversational tone I thought that was really interesting um, where you just um, you know, you address things to you and, and talking to that. And I know we've, you know, I've tried that a few times and it does seem to get a pretty good response when you're speaking um, much less, you know, I guess academically and much less uh, corporate and, and just saying, um, you know, hi, and, <laughs> and uh, we're, you know, we're interested in hearing what you have to say and we're interested in sharing this with you. And we know that you like this thing. There was something from the last book that uh, it was actually, I don't even know if it was the last book necessarily, but there was something from that author who talked about writing um, that talked about uh, starting something with that, that empathy that you were talking about, Rachel, it's that, um, you know, we know that you're going through this. So here's this solution and here's this situation. So starting off with that, you know, yes, we know that you're having this problem. We know that you're having a hard time finding a book to read, finding what your next book is to read. Um, and, uh, you know, some of those universal kind of feelings and, and experiences we have will resonate pretty well with people. So, yeah, I think that was, I think that was good, was good insight. What else, what other things do other folks have to say about, about this book um, and how it works for them? Uh, Hannah. I finally figured out how to raise my hand. <laughs> Yay. <laughs> um, Thanks right, very much, um, Hannah. Okay, next. That was, <laughs> that was all I wanted to say. <laughs> no, go ahead. Uh, <laughs> no I, one thing I really appreciated um, and something I've been thinking about a lot um, since I started this book um, was about kind of aligning everything that we do with like, um, like strategic goals or the larger story of your library. Um, and that's something that I have struggled with a lot um, because, well, like Donna, I was the first person in my job. It was created and then I started and it was kind of like, it, it's taken several years for us to kind of finally get to the place where people I think are understanding kind of like why marketing is not just marketing, but why creating an overall story and have everything you do kind of fit into those stories, um, how, how that, why that's important. Um, but so I really appreciated her talking about that. And I, I was thinking too, because she's all about, you know, clear, you have to, your writing has to be clear. It has to be concise. And I love that so much, but I've noticed when I have things or people have brought um, things to me that they want advertised or they want to put on our social media, I have so much harder of a time coming up with concise text 
yeah. when it's things that don't align with our goals, <laughs> um, which is hard because, because I'm the only person in like our marketing area, um, I rely a lot on everybody in the library to create content. And we have a lot of really creative people at my library, um, but not everybody is thinking the way that I'm thinking because I'm constantly thinking about like, how does this relate to the larger story? And not everybody else is thinking that way. And so it's just, I've noticed, especially since COVID, we've, you know, we have people who they're the jobs that they typically would do like public service, you know, desks and stuff that has, those have kind of gone away and we, we aren't open yet to the public. And so okay. they're kind of trying to fill their time doing stuff. <laughs> and yeah. so it's, it's been hard and it, it, something kind of clicked into place for me when I read this book, which is that it makes sense why some things are harder to market than others. <laughs> yeah. um, for me personally, because there are things that align or don't align with kind of our, or not even that they don't align. It's not like a negative thing, but they just, it's hard to identify how those fit in the larger story of our library um, or our goals. Um, and so that's something I wish I could talk to her and be like, what do I do? <laughs> <laughs> How do I get everybody on the same page? Um, but, she, she is very responsive on social media, so I'm sure you could ask well, her. I'll that have to talk to her. And, yeah, uh, well, because you know, you I want everything. I mean, I'm all for like, let's make it as short as possible. Let's make it concise. Let's you know, let's make it funny. Like, but when you're trying to explain something because it doesn't fit, it's like it just is. I don't know. I yeah. think it shows. I guess what I'm trying to say is, I think it shows especially like in social media, if something you're doing doesn't align, um, direct, like if you can't say this directly um, goes to this goal that we have or to this part of the story or whatever. Um, yeah. Anyway, Hannah, I'm kind of rambling. Example? Do you have an example? Yeah. <laughs> yes, I do. Um, <laughs> I mean, not to, you know. An example <laughs> of how it, when it doesn't work? Yes. Yeah, um, <laughs> I don't even want to talk about it because it's kind of embarrassing. <laughs> but, We're all friends here. Yeah, I mean the 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 people that I work with are very creative, so I don't I don't want to like, you know. And I appreciate people who are. I kind of I come from a journalism background, so I'm a little bit more like. I I feel sometimes like I'm not as creative as I need to be in this job, but so like we have people who have been they kind of came up with this idea of making videos that are li library employees, like doing like these kind of ridiculous tasks, um, like in the library. And so the, there's a kernel of an idea there that, that is pretty funny. Right. And kind of could be kind of quirky and people love seeing our, li like our librarians and stuff like that. So people always respond to that when we have, either pictures or, you know, blog posts or videos about kind of library life. People love that. But the problem is they're making these videos that are like, um, like 30 minutes long Whoa. and nobody watches them. <laughs> and, so, and so I'm like, I don't, but and I've, I've said multiple times, like, I, th I think we, these need to be like 10 minutes at most. Yeah. And the yeah. thing is you could, you could cut the fat off of those and they, could easily be five or yeah, three of those. But because I'm not, because I'm one person and I'm trying to do all this different stuff, I can't be involved in the filming of these or the editing of these. And so oh. there's like toes that get, can get stepped on. And so there's just like, but I'm like, it's something that I, it doesn't, people don't watch them because they're so long, first of all. Um, but then also I feel sort of embarrassed because they don't, they don't really like, they don't serve a purpose in terms of yeah. our story. Um, anyway, I don't, this doesn't have to be like a counseling session. <laughs> <laughs> I, I'm just not really sure how to, you know, how to handle it's it because it's also sort of their thing. It's just trying to figure out how to help. It's, I'm surprised they don't come for you at least for the text of it and for the length of it because you're the marketing person there, correct? Yeah. Well, and that's what I'm, yes, that's what I'm saying is there's kind of like a, there, there's a whole, I mean, we don't need to get into it. There's a whole history <laughs> in the library of, of being kind of like, um, even before I came into the position of people being really resistant yeah. um, 
to marketing. And I think, I also think part of what's going on is they're thinking of it as programming, which I was not ever involved in the programming side. Um, And so I feel like that's been a whole issue just all through COVID, probably for a lot of us, I'm assuming where they don't really want me interjecting anything when they, they're sort of thinking that what they're doing is like programming, like what yeah. I've been trying to kind of communicate is that online behavior is different, um, mm-hmm. is much different than in-person behavior. Um, mm-hmm. Kids will sit through a half hour goofy thing at the library, but they're not going to sit through that online. And so, um, yeah. so I don't know, I, I am not ever sure in this time of COVID when everybody is trying their best to do, you know, are really trying their best. Um, I just, I don't know how to handle it. So anyway. I, I think, I think, you know, I think that's great for sharing. Thank you so much for, um, for sharing that. And, and I think the kind of the one thing that I was excited about when we started this group was uh, that it gives the opportunity to share these experiences. Cause I am certain that uh, I, I would be shocked if none of us have had these same experiences. <laughs> um, you know, we do, we have creative people. And I think, you know, looking at again, like, you know, the books that we've read so far talk a lot about, well, that's great, but you know, what, what, you know, just to go back to the other book, but uh, the story brand book, if you hadn't had a chance, is pretty neat, but you know, we're not the heroes. We're, you know, our customers are the heroes. They're the ones. And, and even like Ann says, you know, it's, it's about what can we do for you? So it's not really, you know, it's, it's not, it's, it's not a bad thing that they're being creative. It's great that they're being excited and having fun. So um, uh, Angela, you've had your hand up for a bit. Um, Yeah, um, actually kind of connecting with the, the idea of during COVID, um, things have really jumped to being more online. A lot of the programming yeah. is online. So maybe prior to COVID, programs would have just happened. I'm like, uh, like, I have no part in that. But now that um, we're doing videos and video story times and all, you know, all kinds of different stuff now, like the, the distinction between those worlds is a little, a little different than it was before. Um, And I have a lot more say on on how we're presenting ourselves on social media and all of that. Um, It's been a really interesting experience for me because I started my position um, in my current role um, at the beginning of February. And then a month later, our library shut down um, for three and a half months. Um, (laughs) And so sort of in the midst of acclimating myself to a new role and finding um, my voice as the the one doing the marketing and finding our voice as the library. There's also like a pandemic going on and our library is closed and, you know, our services are different now. Um, It's definitely been quite a ride. Um, And I really appreciated this book because it sort of like broke everything down. Like the chapters are really easy chunks. And I felt like it gave me a lot of freedom and reminded me of the freedom to be myself in social media to bring I am, my jokes, my personality, um, that I am the, the spokesperson for the library um, and people don't respond to kind of like dry professional writing. Um, they, they want something fun, they want something they, can, they connect to. Um, we have a little mascot Um, It's a little dinosaur and he does all kinds of different things, just like this random toy. Um, But like one time he wore a mask. Um, We have a lot of lantern flies in um, Pennsylvania. They're like killing all the the plants. They're an invasive species. And so we, I posted a picture of him like chomping on a lantern fly and then like posted the kind of like a PSA of like, hey, um, if you, they, you know, about like how to kill their nests mm-hmm. or whatever. Yeah. Um, and that received a lot of attention on social media. Um, I don't know, so it's just a reminder of um, to do what catches 
people's attention and to like find that voice, like who are we as a library that's different than, you know, X library down the streets or the town mm -hmm. or wherever, like who are we distinctively? Yeah, that's a great point. And yeah, there was definitely some things in here about being distinct and, and finding that voice and finding something that matches with your customers and your, um, uh, yeah, I think that's a great way to make sure. And yeah, again, talking about, you know, the one thing that was in there about Twitter is a converse, it's a dialogue, not a monologue. So talking to people and, and having that, I think that's a great application of it. Um, Donna, you had uh, some, you had a comment? Well, just to, to Hannah's point, I think yeah. Um, a, a way around that little bit of a roadblock would be to go to those people and say, hey, listen, I am absolutely thrilled that you are generating this programming because we really need that right now. But can you also put together something that's less than two or three minutes that I can throw up on Facebook so that I can direct our traffic to your programming mm. and, and, yeah. you know, can you, can you make me a teaser trailer? Mm -hmm. Can you, you know, can, you know, use that stuff, cut it down to, to just the, here's, here's the bare bones of what you need to know so that, you know, your patrons will say, oh yeah, it's going to be worth 30 minutes of my time to invest in doing this and, you know, and, and appealing to them and, and actually, you know, giving the appearance of relying on them more may actually get a little bit more buy-in into what you're doing. That's a good point. Yeah. Yeah. Turn it around, get them to, uh, get them to take a little more ownership and understanding of where we're trying to go. I think that's, uh, that's uh, great advice and, and definitely consistent with what it says in the book. It's, you know, trying to connect with people and, and uh, get them familiar with, um, yeah, with what, what we're saying and get everybody on the same page. And yeah, I thought that the, uh, uh, the little, you know, tweets should be 120, you know, 120 to 130 characters. And uh, this, this should be this many words and this should be that long. I thought that was uh, really something that, that was very helpful and I look forward to, to using it. Well, we are uh, running up toward the top of the hour. Um, and uh, this has been this has been so great. I really appreciate it. Uh, um, everybody joining in. It's so exciting to see uh, this. And uh, uh, any other uh, comments? Kind of last comments before we uh, wrap up and, and talk about what's um, you know what's ahead. Hey, Chris. I don't know if Nicole wanted to say something, oh. but she couldn't figure out. She's not oh, been able to sorry. raise her hand. <laughs> Nicole, go ahead. I'm sorry. It was the answer. I was basically, I was just having not read it. I was going to, and my camera gets like fuzzy. So there we go. Now I'm going to focus. Um, no, having not read it, I wasn't sure if she like was talking for like one specific type of writing. Cause I know at my library we do, you know, I write a weekly column where it's very, I, me, and I put a lot of like my personal experience in it, but then like mm -hmm. an email that we would send to our 70,000 card holders, you know, I wouldn't put that on there and then it kind of like changes up. So I just wasn't sure like from the group, if she really differentiates like between you know, how to use different tones in your different settings, or if that's just kind of assumed. Yeah, I mean, what I got from it, I thought that it was, you know, that there was some things about, um, uh, you know, again, considering the situation and considering the audience and considering the purpose. There was definitely some ways that I think uh, she made that real flexible to be able to apply it in different situations. Yeah, I think, you know, I think it's it's something that is, good for marketing writing, for sales writing, for nonprofit writing. There was, there was a lot of stuff in there. She may not have detailed it that way, but I felt like it was pretty flexible. So yeah, yeah. No, that was just my thought. Yeah. Yeah. That's great. Um, so, uh, so next book, um, it, there is a form that you can submit your suggestions for the next book. I'll place that on the Facebook group again. I'll post it on the Facebook group again today. Um, you can put it in the comments if you want or just add it to the Google form. Um, and uh, then tomorrow I'll put out a selection of three books that, uh, that we'll select from and, uh, and move toward our next meeting, which will be 
I forget now. I think I forget. Is it last Thursday or fourth Thursday? Um, I think last Thursday of each month, or last Tuesday rather of each month. And we'll look forward to that next meeting. Um, feel free to discuss online. Uh, I will also post a feedback form in the interest of continuing to gather data and make this group um, work as well as it can for for all of you. Uh, so I'll put that up if you participated, since there's not really a way for me to directly email you guys a form. Um, if you can fill that out, that would be great. And anytime, any other questions, hit us up, uh, hit, uh, hit each other up on the Facebook group. Um, feel free to post things about the books that you're reading or any other advice that you have. Um, I actually even have one thing that I thought, Hannah, um, our folks here use something called a logic model. I don't know if y'all are familiar with logic models. Um, I'll share it with the group. It's a neat way to, um, it's a neat way to kind of look at what is your 10 year vision, five years, how, how, what is it, how do you get there by in five years, how do you get there in three years, one year, and then what are you looking for? When you see it, I think it'll make more sense, but it gives you an idea of uh, a decision-making way of, yeah, this is a good thing for us to do, and mm, maybe this thing doesn't fit quite as well, um, you know, or how, how you might adjust it. So, and anybody else that has other things like that, um, would be would be awesome to hear. Hope the folks that haven't had a chance to read the book enjoy and, and feel free to share your thoughts. And uh, it's one o'clock. Thank you all so much. This has been awesome. Hope you guys had a good time and look forward to talking to y'all soon. Have a great day. Bye.